गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स अगेन वी आर बैक टू आवर कोर्स बी सी ट्रेनिंग रिगार्डिंग स्मार्ट ग्रीड्स एंड वी हैव टिल नाउ डिस्क्राइब अबाउट द कार्बन फूड प्रिंट्स फ्रॉम द कोल एंड गैस बेस्ड थर्मल पावर प्लांट्स वाई रिन्यूएबल्स आर नेसेसरी एंड ऑल दिस कंसेप्शन लीड टू आवर the conception of the smart grid so our topic of discussion is about the smart smart grid architectural designs and today's electric grid is designed to operate as a vertical structure so our grid present grid is operating as a vertical structure vertical structure so what does this vertical structure means vertical structure means the generation transmission distribution and utilization from one utility company so from the one utility company is controlling the generation transmission distribution and the utilization and back to we are paying that is known as the vertical structure so this vertical structure one disadvantage is the monopoly in the system now if the monopoly acts the whatever the price they will be charging may be for 1 kilowatt hour they may be charging around 1 uh, rupee per kilowatt hour so that thing we have to pay but if it is a deregulated uh, system then many independent power producers will be coming and the competition will rise and the rate of the power uh, between uh, the uh, generation and the load end that is the customer will be less so so consisting of the vertical structure consists of the uh, generation generation uh, plus transmission transmission plus distribution distribution plus utilization now all these things are done if the customers they don't utilize the power then they will not get the revenue so the utilization is also one of the backbones of the country's economic growth development and the per capita income of the country utilization so these are the four main basic structure of a vertical system power system and vertical system means monopoly in the system means mono M O N O P O L Y monopoly in the system. Whatever they will be charging, we have to pay it because there is no other option. And it controls and devices to maintain. So what they are doing? They are controlling. So what controlling? Then they are controlling the generation, controlling the. equipments controlling the equipments as well as they are studying the reliability reliability now how they are studying the reliability in the system if there is a shortage of power if they can't generate they will be applying some more spinning reserves in the system and they will be supplying so reliability concept is coming if i have reserves reserves if i don't have the reserves maybe in short of reserves so if i don't have the reserves if my one generator fails then the power is interrupted so every customer who is paying at the end of the month must need must have an uninterrupted power supply so the uninterrupted power supply comes from the reserves what the utility is having short of reserves so that conception 
goes to the liability in the system. Then the stability comes. Then the stability comes and the efficiency. Efficient. How efficient my equipments are there and how efficiently I am. Another thing is that that will be coming in the uh, smart uh, grid operation the power quality in the system so presently in the vertical they are controlling this one now power control so power control power control means the generation and demand should be always matching with each other plus losses that thing i have discussed in the back lectures so power control, controlling the equipments, if there is any faults uh, in the system, we have to control the uh, equipments through the uh, 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 through the fault analysis, uh, the reliability, the stability in the system, the efficiency, all these things we have to do. So, however, the system operators are now facing new challenges, including the penetration of the challenges are being faced. The, what are the challenges? New challenges. Now, what challenges they are facing? They are facing the new challenges, penetration. Penetration of renewable energy sources. Now, why the penetration of renewable energy sources? Due to the carbon footprints of the conventional power plants. That is the thermal and nuclear. So, the penetration of the renewable energy sources, that is one shot of the challenges in the system. So, and the technological change so this becomes so new challenges comes under the rapid technological change rapid technological change and to enhance so these things what they will be enhancing? They will be enhancing the resiliency. The resiliency. Number two, forecasting. To protect against the internal and external threats so resiliency that will be new challenges these are the new technologies developed renewable sources brings new technological changes to enhance to build up the resiliency in the system and the new forecasting techniques that is load forecasting so these all these things will help us to protect against internal and external threats so internal and external threats so we have to protect our system from internal and external threats so design framework of the smart grid is based upon unbundling and restructuring the power sector and optimizing its assets so all these systems, number of generators, generators are, suppose in a system, a small system is having five generators. Which generator to operate at which hour of uh, demand or which period of demand, that is known as optimizing the resources. Optimizing the resources. So, another thing is becoming that is known as optimization of the resources. Optimization of, of the resources. So, all these things comes under the smart grid. This is the traditional system. 
and new challenges are come to the penetration of renewable energy sources. So as a result, there is a rapid technological change and this rapid technological change brings the system to be more resilient and the forecasting techniques are more enhanced to protect the system against internal and external faults and the threats and the optimization of our nature uh, of our sources that must be done through many solutions methods one study you will be studying in your seventh semester unit commitment solution techniques as you have done economic load dispatch the unit commitment solution techniques should be done because what the unit commitment tells the number of generators are there suppose there are three generators and all the three generators should not be operated so that it will come to the more you will be utilizing more economy to minimize the economy which generator is best suited for which period of time that you have to choose who will choose the independent system operator iso will choose so iso will choose which generator to operate at which time that means he has got a very good fast algorithm and fast optimization techniques and the program is ready and through that he will tell that in the forecasted time period this generator should be run during the peak hours of time so i am rubbing this So, you can tell, so number one, the new grid, that means the new smart grid, the new smart grid should have many advantages and we must focus on these things. Number one, handling uncertainty in schedules, handling uncertainties handling uncertainties in schedules and power transfer in schedules and power transfer across regions Number two, accommodating renewables. RDS, renewable energy sources. Optimizing the transfer capability. for the transmission networks. Number four, managing and resolving unpredictable events. in operation and planning. So, little bit, all these four points are a very good research area nowadays. So, particularly one by one little bit I will be discussing 
handling uncertainties in schedules and power transfers across regions. So yeah, I think you may be knowing, suppose the, this is area one, then this is area two. They are interrelated, uh, interconnected between these two areas by the tie lines. And in between, there are many correct connections in the, this area. And in between, there is also a connective, suppose there is a generator, this, uh, this is the internal connection and this is the external connection between the two areas. So handling uncertainties in the schedules. Suppose the, it is, suppose here there are three generators and here there are five generators. Here there are five generators. So scheduling has been done. You should operate at this time. You will be operating at this time. You will be operating at this time. So due to some failure, some generator is not operating. So the load is demanded here. So generator can't provide that load. And so the interconnected system will provide the power. So due to some uncertainties in schedules and transfers across the regions. Accommodating renewable energy sources. So some renewable, so there is no need. Suppose the power rate is higher here. So importing power from this place to this place will cost more. So they have some amount of renewable energy sources of let us say 10 megawatt. So that energy sources can be provided by the region A itself. Optimizing the transfer capability of the transmission networks. Now what is the transfer capability? Each and every transmission line has a capability of its own. You can't send power beyond the transfer capability uh, uh, from one region to another region. So that is also the most important level for the security in the system. If the security is to be maintained at par, so we have to see what is the transfer capability of a transmission line. So beyond, so there is the constraint, the economic constraint should be optimized under the condition the transfer capability should be less than this. So it is rather a optimization problem. So that's why optimization techniques you have to learn. And moreover, managing and re uh, resolving unpredictable events in operation and planning. So in operation, many unpredictable events may occur. That is maybe the outage in the system, outage in the transmission line. And so for that, contingency studies are needed. So, if my system is this, this line is a failure or this generator is a failure, still I can provide power to this place, to this transmission line with a secured manner and uh, at an economic cost. So, many unpredictable events may occur and planning, planning is maybe of four categories. One is a short time planning long-term planning and medium-term planning. Even hourly planning is also there. So long-term planning means we have to forecast. We have to predict the load predictions after 10 years. What will be the uh, future load prediction? What will be the anticipated demand? And what will be our energy resources? So by in the last video lecture, in the coming 10 years, we will be only 1.5 billion people will need five times the uh, energy what Northern America is presently taking. Only 1.5 billion. The rest 6.5 billion I am not talking about. Only 1.5 billion will take five times the present energy what Northern America is consuming. So future planning is also a must for our smart grid system. So, I can tell you about some difference between your today's grid Today, whatever is our grid system, today's grid 
and about the future grid that will be your smart grid a smarter grid so various points we will be discussing so number one point this one you can say preferred characteristics preferred characteristics okay so number one let us tell about the consumer participation consumer participation number two we can tell about generation and storage number three we can have describe our products services and markets products services and markets number four we can describe about the power quality number 5 we can describe about the optimization of the assets optimization of the assets number 6 we can describe system dis disturbances and healing and healing and number seven let us describe about the resiliency in the system resiliency so Consumer participation under today's grid, it is uninformed and they do not participate. Means, whatever they will generate, they will uh, provide us the power some utility electric companies are good they are providing but if you go to jargon you will say around half of the year they are under load shedding so the customer don't participate in this uh, today's grid but in the smart grid involved the participants they are involved and the demand response and distributed energy resources. Involved, demand response and huge DG, distributed energy resources. Distributed generation sources. They provide power itself and if their power is in excess they can send it to the grid so the customers are involved now about the generation and storage so here in today's area if they are dominated by central generation central generation agencies so whatever they will ask you to pay we have to pay that is monopoly in the business they are dominating can we go and ask that you make my price less no they will come and cut my electric line so here the customers will plug and play convenience focus on renewables plug and play convenience according to their convenience 
of the distributed energy sources on renewables on renewable energy sources products services and markets poorly integrated wholesale markets Here, growth of electricity markets. Now, this is one area where I can tell you something about the market economics. So, the buyers and sellers, if the independent power producers will come in our area, suppose in Kolkata area, there is Calcutta Electric Supply Corp corporation okay so if independent power producers will be coming and they will be telling i will provide the power at a cheaper price many of the customers will leave calcutta electric supply corporation and they will see and take it as a challenge whether the power is of good quality whether it is uninterrupted or not and how much they are reliable in the system so the market economics that the power market economics the growth will be coming and the price reduction has been done no monopoly in the system but here in today's grid the market economics is very poor very less only uh, in northern america some electricity markets in new zealand also some electricity markets are there Now the, about the power quality, so slow response to the power quality, slow response, so slow response and so a good response is given to the quality and price good good quality and price now optimization of the assets little integration little integration little integration of asset management And here, data acquisition system is done. Of grid parameters. So, the collected data are got and the optimization techniques are being applied here no data nothing and little integration of the asset management so suppose i have one spinning reserve okay the power has gone off okay start that one only this much in today's grid in the smart grid the data acquisition of the grid parameters so system disturbances so protecting protecting only a fault a ground fault or a line fault or a three phase fault this one protecting the only the fault or generator fault here automatically detects Here automatically detects and responds to problem. Resiliency here it is vulnerable.
to terror and natural disasters. It may destroy the system and here it is resilient. So here it is vulnerable and here it is resilient. resilient to cyber attacks to cyber attacks so these are the about the today's grid and smart grid in the we are making the grid more smarter more green and why green because penetration of the renewable energy sources and less carbon footprint so smart grid is known as the green energy grid and the preferred characteristics we have described about all these things so there are various topics we have to discuss yesterday also we have discussed about the load frequency control about the wide area measurement system the points we have discussed about the stability factors the voltage stability and angle stability many sorts of things are there each and every point we have to discuss we have to focus we have to take the challenge and we have to make our grid more smarter more green and we have to be live in this world and that's the study beginning of the sustainable energy thank you